What's going on? It's Keyshawn. Welcome to my show, Undisputed Presents All Facts, No Breaks Podcast. Sitting next to me today is a former, whatever, man, UCLA Bruin across town. He was a 14-year NBA veteran <laughs> and an NBA champion, the host of All Smoke Podcast, Matt Barnes, one of my homeboys, and I like to call them the light skin crew, because at UCLA, you know, they all got the light skin. Fair skin is what we would say. All of them, for yeah, a long man. period of time, they look like my man. But they didn't all play like my man. What's up, man? I'm good, man. Well, first of all, man, congratulations on everything, man. I appreciate you know it. I mean, you made a transition here and, and, and with the new deal, and they got you set up nice in here. They try. Yeah, you got set up. I mean, all these TVs and all these... This shit is big time, bro. It's graphics. Yeah. But the, what makes the show is people <laughs> like you coming on as my guest and, in, in, you know, sharing yeah. the spotlight with me, yeah, yeah, so yeah. to speak, and being able to talk all sports and break it all down and get a fax. You know, because a lot of times when we as ex-players tend to take these jobs in the media, we got one foot in, one foot mm -hmm. out. We scared to have real conversations mm -hmm. and tell it like it is. But when I created this in particular situation, I said, nah, shoes coming off. No, got it. We gonna I have see. You got, your, you got your toes out. Oh yeah, out. man, I yeah, got you, my toes out. And it's raining. Your, but, but it's your place, so you can have your toes out <laughs> in your place, man. Let's get it. And on top of that, I get an opportunity to work with my son, Keyshawn Jr., 25-year-old. I bring him in the fold, a little bit of nepotism around here. Because that's what they do. <laughs> hey, man, you got to... If Hey, look, I say it this way, Matt. If I don't do it, who will? Right? Come on, man. Good, nice. yeah, they, you fill out the application. He fills out the application. He call them the next day. They're going to tell him, oh, well, we're still looking over it. Meanwhile, they didn't hire 12 other people. So mm -hmm. I got it under yeah. control. No, I got my kids got their own little podcast, too, and they're hooping. So they, they're working their way up the pipeline, too. Okay. Yeah. What's up, Kiki? What's up? Yeah, we'll talk about that later. But let's start off the show with some NBA. After the Lakers fell below 500, a disgruntled LeBron James addressed the media the other night. <laughs> Take a look. We could, on any given night, beat any team in the NBA. And then on any given night, we get our ass kicked by any team in the NBA. That's just the... What's our record? One, one game under 500 is what we've seen. Under 500? One game under 500. Yeah, what, 24-25? That's where we are. The King also took to Twitter to post his first cryptic tweet of the year, sending out an hourglass emoji. Matt... How do you interpret this tweet from Braun? Somebody's on their way out. That's exactly what that hourglass means. It, when all that sand falls to the bottom, a couple guys that are in Laker uniforms ain't going to be there no more. No, but look, it's still some left at the top. That's what I'm saying. When it yeah. all falls to the bottom. And, 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 and he may be speaking, you know, I go back and forth. He could be speaking to the players, but obviously you played in the NBA. You played against LeBron. You know how he operates and manipulates things over there with Rich Paul and Clutch to get certain guys in the situation. <laughs> in, the, in the end, is he talking to Darwin Ham, though? Like, what is he really saying? I mean, there ain't no really no telling. You know, obviously, with LeBron's greatness, a lot comes with that. Yes. And um, I actually just talked to D. Ham the other day, and, you know, I had D. Ham when I played for the Lakers back when, when, when I was with, over there with Kobe, and he was an assistant coach. But coming into that seat, Key, you know you from here, it, 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 the, the light never turns off. No. Whether you're winning, whether you're losing, you're the number one team talked about in all of sports. So I hit DeHam yesterday, just told him to hold his head, man, because he's going to be the scapegoat, whether it's his fault or not, because players are making so much money now that the, that the coach has to be the scapegoat. Back when I first came in the league, the coaches carried a lot of weight. Uh, but as we've transitioned, the game is growing, players are making more money. Now, nine out of ten times, the coach is the scapegoat. Again, I'm not sure if it's his fault or not, but he will be blamed for what's going on. What? What type of coach could withstand the turbulence that's going on with the Lakers right now? It's like, what type of coach? Maybe just LeBron being player coach. Maybe, I mean, that could work. I mean, it, it's a tough seat. Again, it's a hot seat. Because of LeBron. Consistently talk. I'm not necessarily saying because of LeBron, because it's, it's, it's the Lakers, first of all. So first and foremost, and then you add LeBron's light to that Laker light, and that light, you know, you need a lot of sunblock on to sit underneath that light. So... <laughs> Whether it's Darvin Ham or somebody else, it's always going to be a hot seat in a hot position. At the end of the day, this is an older team with the, you know, every year they're constructing a new roster. You know, chemistry is very important. And I feel like because they got that bubble championship off a team they built that first season that Laker fans expect every single year, we can just throw a bunch of guys together with LeBron and they can win a championship. And it's not like that. So, again, 
I don't know how cryptic it was or who it was to, whether it's teammates or whether it's to the coach, but, you know, some, something's going to change. Somebody's going to roll at some point. Something's going to change. See, uh, the reason I say because of LeBron is because I feel like it's so hard to win the opinion of others when you coaching a LeBron or mm -hmm. Kobe Bryant. Like, it's just hard. Yeah. Because they ain't going nowhere. No. Right? I no. mean, at the end of the day, they're such great champions. And Michael Jordan, obviously, but he had Fielder mm -hmm. basically the entire time and he was winning championships. It's just so hard to be able to, because you damned if you do, damned if you don't, as a coach with somebody like LeBron. Now, LeBron ain't necessarily trying to push you out, mm -mm. but if you're not winning, people look at it and they go, well, it ain't LeBron. It's yeah. This dude. Yeah. And it's tough because, again, LeBron is coming down, unfortunately, to kind of the backside of his career. We may only have LeBron maybe two, three more yeah. years, four, if we're lucky. And I say lucky because I think too often we sit back in and, and fans sit back and criticize and critique everything he does instead of enjoying his greatness. But the clock is ticking. Yes. And his hourglass is ticking. So he wants to maximize his time. I feel like he will be a Laker until he's done unless he, you know, goes back to maybe a Cleveland to retire his jersey because that's maybe where he started. But I think his playing days are going to finish not. in L.A. And he wants to have the best team around him. And the one thing I will say about this is they have a lot of assets. They have some similar players and they have a lot of assets to go out there and get uh, them. And I'm a big fan of Austin Reeves, but I think that the Lakers are overvaluing who he is. You know is. what's so crazy about this, Matt? And, I, and I'll never give up my conversation, the name of my conversation, right, right, right. but I had I had a real conversation with a real individual that really knows the game. Mm -hmm. Like, he helped create basketball, mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. And we were having dinner. This was the start of the season. And he's, this started the season. He told me, he says, your team, because, you know, I'm like, mm -hmm. he says, your team isn't good, Keyshawn. Mm. And I'm trying to, I'm listening to him. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with him, right? Because right, right, I can't right. argue with him. Right, it's OG. Right. And I'm like, what you mean? He goes, they got LeBron James who's 39 years old and they got Anthony Davis when he wants to play. Mm. I said, but they got Austin Reeves. He said, Austin Reeves is a good little player. That's what he said. So I'm sitting back and I'm listening to it and I'm saying to myself, okay, but because I can't argue with him. Right. Ain't right. nowhere in the world. Right. So we just chopping it up and he's telling you, so you're not good. The other team is better. He goes, the other team, he said, the other team, probably going to win the NBA Finals. Mm. I'm like, mm. no. Nah. Mm. It's like, don't worry about the chemistry. Don't worry about James Harden. You don't say worry. the other team, you mean the Clippers. You mean the Clippers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said the other team. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I just listened to it. But right. now that I look back at that conversation and I look at what the Clippers and Kawhi, and if they stay healthy, I'm like, yeah, he... Yeah. He was kind of right. Yeah, no, I mean, again, I'm a big fan of Austin Reeves. I think he's done a great job while he's been a Laker. But I feel like, when, you know, when I'm reading trade stuff and possible, we're not giving him up unless we get an all-star. But but he's not an all-star. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, again, all due respect, great role player. Yeah. Great role player. But if you're going to have to count on him night in, night out to be that second guy if AD decides to chill or that third guy consistently – is that what he's going to give you? And again, huge fan. I, I like Austin. I like Austin a lot. But again, I think just the Lakers are overvaluing because a lot of teams want him. And, and, and I think in order to really make a move, they may have to give him up. But it seems like they're very reluctant to give him up. And I'm reading like we're only giving Austin Reeve up for a third star. Well, if he was that third star, you wouldn't be giving him up in the first place. Yeah. You know, so it's a lot of stuff going on over there. Rob's got his hands full. Jeannie's got her hands full. And um, but again, They've been great at the trade deadline, making things happen, putting things together. And again, this team, I felt like this team wasn't going to be a regular season team. They're big, they're long, they're older. I feel like they were get to the playoffs and they could make possibly another run like they did last year because they're in a similar state, maybe three games worse than they were last year. I don't know exactly what their record is at this point, but I feel like this team— 24 and 25. I feel like this team is built for the playoffs if they can get to the playoffs because there's more rest there, there's more strategy there, and that's where LeBron's greatness kicks in. They play Boston They play Boston tonight in Boston. AD and, and um, LeBron are questionable, but it's a big-time— Nationally televised game. I'm assuming they gonna play. play. Yeah, I'm assuming. But I saw AD, set, AD set out last game against Atlanta. If I wasn't mistaken, Braun played. He set out Atlanta and he was in and out against Houston. Okay, so ain't no telling. Uh, Matt, you mentioned that you have been talking to Darvin Ham. So let's quickly throw it back to a moment that was caught on video with you guys. Let's roll the tape. That's what we need. That's what we need. 
Be him. That's Man. my guy. <laughs> yeah. So my question for you are: Are the Lakers too soft? Do they need an enforcer so like that, you? That's what that conversation was talking about. I think that was summer league, maybe two or three years ago, and uh, they were talking about the, the game isn't the same anymore. And uh, you know, if I if I wanted to come out there and, and, and strap it back up, but uh, oh, so he what he yeah. this is this is before he became the Laker coach. I think this was as if he's been there for two years, right? Two, so last I think, year, and this I, year. Yeah. So I. Yeah, so I think this was his first year coming into being the Lakers coach. Oh, okay. Right? Last was, year was his first yeah, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, it, it was that summer league. And, you know, they could definitely use some physicality. But at the end of the day, I think the game overall has moved away from that. The, you know, the Draymond Greens, the Pat Bevs, uh, they're, they're kind of the last of a dying breed. The game has gone away from any kind of physicality, any kind of real defense, what I feel like is a real issue in, in the game. And it's more about getting up and down and who can score the most points without any resistance. Yeah, see, when I look at the Lakers, though, it, it feels like to me they missing the, I don't want to call it enforcer, but somebody that ain't going to play no fucking yeah. games. Could be. Because that ain't, that, that's really not LeBron's personality. No. Like when you watched him the other night against Houston, and and, and oh, Brooks yeah. is Some, acting like he acted. Someone should have slapped the shit out of Brooks. He, yeah, they be letting but, him slide too but much. But you man, that, that, that's what I said though. <laughs> yeah, I said it, yeah, it, I said. you letting him slide. You yeah. push a dude in the back like yeah, that, even on, though man. it was a mm -mm. it was a, 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 a push in the spine. Uh, I'm gonna clean you. You out. can hurt that dude. Yeah, I'm gonna clean you out. Yeah. Right? I mean, uh, like so. And also, key not to cut you off. I just feel like. If LeBron was in his mid or even early 30s, he can carry his team through all this because he's always been able to put a team on his back and do whatever. He's just older now. And I think last year in the playoffs was the first time we saw he can't even, and this is with all due respect again, it's hard for him to carry from the entire game. He has to pick and choose his quarters. Now. Yeah. I mean, and just because Mother Nature's caught up. This guy's got a lot of miles and a lot of years on his body and his game. So he can't carry you for almost an entire game. Now, he kind of picks and chooses his spots. He understands his body and when and where to go. And that's why I feel like AD needs to be more consistent. But, but to AD's credit, I feel like AD's been consistent no, this year. No, he has. AD has been really consistent this year. He's played in, in more games than, 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 than he sat out. And when he does play, when he is out there, he's, he's a force to be reckoned with. No, he, he, he's certainly... As Lil Wayne uh, tried to do <laughs> trade him you know, a couple months ago, all of a sudden he started playing. Lil yeah, Wayne said, get right, him up out of here. Right, he too, right, right, right. you know, he walking around like a paper bag. <sighs> I, I think they still need somebody with some, I don't know, a little bit of a grunt to him. You that, know? that and shooting, I feel like. I, I feel like, obviously, LeBron is best when he has shooters around and he can work that middle. That middle, that middle of the court and be able to get downhill and make plays for his teammates. Um, they don't have enough, to me, enough consistent shooting. And I feel like another guy that's kind of Jekyll and Hyde sometimes is D'Angelo Russell. D'Lo. Super talented, but kind of like I pick and choose when I want to go, too. And when you have two guys as talented as Anthony Davis and D'Lo that kind of on or off, if you have them on all the time, they completely change the dynamic of your team. Was you on the Laker team with Swaggy? No. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I, wasn't, I didn't know if he was on that team. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Well, stick, sticking with the NBA, Draymond Green recently chimed in about the 65-game rule. Joel playing tonight felt very much so because of the 65-game limit. What I think is actually quite bullshit. Guys didn't face those rules before, but those same NBA, all NBA teams, those same MVP awards, lists, uh, defensive player of the year, those lists are the same. I once lost um, a defensive player of the year award to Kawhi Leonard, and I think he played 51 games. In turn, um, you get Joel, who comes out there tonight, and he forces it. And Freak played with him and uh, J.K. diving for the ball, but maybe it's not as bad if the knee isn't already banged up. I don't really bang with it. And now we got one of our premier faces in this league, the MVP of our league, possibly hurt for an extended period of time because he's forcing it. All-star Tyrese Halliburton and Kevin Durant expressed similar sentiments to the media and on Twitter, essentially saying the rule is dumb. Matt, do you agree with the players' <laughs> consensus here? Um, I mean, obviously, being a former player, I feel like this is a trick bag because we had got to a point where guys were just sitting out. Yeah. And that's never good. But then you implement this rule... And now it's hurting potential awards and, and, and careers. I think Kendrick Perkins made a great point yesterday on NBA Countdown, and I actually hit him after it because and, 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 it wasn't a very popular point. But he said, 
I would shut Joel and B down for the year. And they were going back and forth on why. But if you think about it, he has a bad knee, Keen. You know, bad, He's had knee, bad, bad knees for a minute. Bad knees don't heal in two or three games off. No, or they two don't. or three weeks. Like you really need time to heal that. And although he's possibly the front runner, he's been having a great season, Joel, but you can tell he's not all the way healthy. So this rule is tough, um, you know, to, 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 to put that 65 cap on it. I feel like the NBA had to do something because I feel like load management got out of hand and it was, it was, it was hurting the game. But then you put this on and, and it also could be hurting the game to Draymond's point where you're making guys who are hurt, they could really use some time off. But, hey, I'm in, a, I'm in an MVP race. I'm not going to take no time off and then he ends up hurting himself so again. So help me understand... The, the, the actual rule. I understand all NBA, you got to, you know, they, you make the all NBA team, whatever, whatever. It helps you with the Supermax. I get mm -hmm, that part. Mm -hmm. But can you, is it a certain amount of players that has to dress for a game? Because in the NFL, or the 53 man roster, they could deactivate you for a certain game and mm -hmm. bring somebody else up. Mm -hmm. In the NBA, can, can't you just dress and not play? Uh, well, I mean, you have to get on the court, I think, is what the yeah, rule is. Yeah, but okay, is. I'm going to go in the warm-ups or something and <laughs> do that and play a few minutes and then bring me out. I don't think they've got that far. I think it might eventually get there. But to, get, to me, if, if 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 I'm a fan, because I, I think they're thinking from a fan's perspective, if, if I'm a fan of Joel Embiid and, and I paid a bunch of money to come watch him yeah, play I'm gonna be and mad. he's on I, that. I, that. That's the part I get so, mad yeah, at. So I think the NBA, that's what the NBA overall is thinking about. But, I mean, again, they've put this 65 is, 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 is the number you have to play at least 65 games to be eligible to make any kind of accoladed uh, – Award. Another thing they can do is let us know as fans, give us 48-hour notice that Matt Barnes is not going to play. And if Matt Barnes isn't going to play, you refund the team, the home team. No, I know they ain't going to want to do that. It's taking right. money out the owner's pockets. Yeah. But refund me my money but back. Because I mean, if I think about it, though, Matt, growing up like we grew up, and we want to take our kids to a game. No, I completely agree on that. And, and all of a sudden, we done saved because Matt Barnes is coming to town. You're right. And now I done and saved it, it this little six hundred dollars. It ain't cheap. Six hundred on the low end. If you got a on family, the, I'm of giving four, it the low end. Right. Tickets, parking, food. Man, tickets, a parking, sweatshirt. food, a sweatshirt because he gonna cry if you don't get a sweatshirt. <laughs> right, all of that. Right. If you if I buy that ticket and you give me a I don't know forty eight hour notice that you're not gonna play this particular person, I should be either rewarded. Tickets for the future or give me my money back? I think maybe rewarded tickets for the future because a lot of times, and, and I've seen it playing with AI or playing with Kobe, like game time decisions, they're really limping around, beat up until, forget it, I'm going to go, I'm going to play. Game time decisions. So, I mean, I hear what you're saying. It's a tricky spot to be in because, again, you know, you guys are always doing it. When I was in the league, it was it was a badge of honor to play as many games as possible. Yeah. If you get to close to 82 as you can, we was having real two-hour practices every day, and then we went to war in the playoffs. Now load management is different, and I feel like key. I feel like this is a whole different situation. What starts at the younger age, I feel like kids are playing too much basketball before they even get to the league. I mean, Absolutely, kids are playing on three or four different teams, play over 150 Crazy. games in the summertime, and they're getting to the league younger, burned out younger. But burnt out. Their yeah. bodies, they're coming in at 19, 20, 21, but their bodies and their knees, they've already been through a couple surgeries and beat up backs. And your, Absolutely. Your body is 27 while your, your real age is 21. Nobody in my family, we all play football. My mm -hmm. son, scholarship to Nebraska, could have went anywhere. Mm -hmm. Top 50 player in the country, could have went anywhere he wanted to. Did not play Pop Warner football. Mm. I didn't play Pop Warner football. I didn't either. My nephew didn't play mm -hmm. Pop Warner football. But we all are walking and we healthy and and I had friends that played Pop Warner. They never went nowhere. High school. Mm -hmm. Man, by the time they got to their second, third year in the league, they was Beat done. Up. Beat up. Beat yeah. up. It's Knees all bad and everything. It's a lot, man. I, yeah, I just feel like, and, and again, it's all, it used to be when I came up in AU, it was the best players played AU, and you only played AU first, like that short summertime. Now AU is year-round until you get to high school, and if you're not good enough now, your dad can go start another team. So it's not just the best, It's now it's, Platinum, gold, silver, bronze. But what like they what, what is it that they okay? What is it that they chase it? Every you can't tell when I walk into a gym in Anaheim, you can't tell every single player and every <laughs> single parent in that gym that their kid is not going to the NBA. Yeah, I, I, yeah no, I shit's when I was crazy. in New York, it shit's yo, crazy. shit is crazy. Shit's I was in crazy. New York in 2020, 2021. We moved back to work at uh, ESPN. They wanted me to go back doing that pandemic year and work from the city. Why mm -hmm. I don't know, but. My son joined the Gauchos. Mm. 
right? He was just, <laughs> so you know. Man, he was practicing at 5 a.m. in the morning. And I kept saying to, you know, I kept telling Book, Coach Book. For what? I kept telling Book. I'm like, Book. For what? Do they realize he ain't going to the NBA, <laughs> man? <laughs> no, Dude, 5'7", man. man. He's not, not going to the NBA. They don't. Yeah, it's just, they it's don't. wild. Yeah, crazy expectations. <laughs> well, All-Star Weekend is coming up. And we know our starters now in the Eastern and Western Conference. Me personally, I'm taking shy over Steph. But Matt, do you think there's any snubs for the starters list? I mean, starters is 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 a badge of honor. Um, you know, obviously making the all-star team is a great accomplishment, but it's hard to argue with anybody in the Western Conference right there. All these guys are at the top of their game. Still, even LeBron is as old as he is, he's still, you know, one of the best players in the league. But Steph is great. You know, this is this is a new wave of popularity and and TikTok and 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 social media. And Shea is really big in that space. Steph is getting a little older. You know what I mean? So he's not as big in these spaces that possibly are driving these fan votes. Because a lot, what I think, if I'm not mistaken, 50% of this is fan voting. So, um, you know, some new faces on there. Congratulations to all those guys. But I mean, I feel like Steph should yeah, be starting. Yeah, new face but who? on there. Ty, uh, Tyrese Halliburton, Shea's a starter now. There's some, there, there's some definitely some new faces. Man, I swear I've seen everybody up there before except Shea. <laughs> oh, no, you know you've definitely seen it before, but not necessarily starting. Luca. Yeah. KD, the Joker. No, they've all made them, but I'm saying like Shea and Tyrese, these guys are new to starting. Yeah. You know, this is these I'm, are new I, to starting. I guess I'm old because ain't no way in the world. Steph Curry, I watched him the other night. He hitting logo threes. Uh, no, like, it was crazy, man. He was crazy. But at this, uh, it's fan base. So, yeah, so I pose this question to you. As great as Steph still is, who are you going to put him in for on that list? If I'm not mistaken, Shea's like number two in the league in scoring. Or man, top I'm, three just in doing scoring. It. I'm just doing it just right. because. Oh, GP, I'm, I feel that. Yeah, I feel I'm, that. I'm, I'm the just same doing way. it. I'm the same way. Like, Chef should be starting, but I don't know for who. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he'll, he'll still get in. Oh, no, yeah, there's no question. Yeah. No question. One marquee event during All-Star Weekend is the three-point shootout between Steph Curry and WNBA Sabrina Ionescu. Sabrina recently set the all-time three-point contest record, making 37 out of 40 shots. Mm. So, Dad, who's winning this shootout? Is she using a... Uh, her ball. Uh, so she's going to use a her women, ball. A women's ball. Women's yep. ball. Mm -hmm. no, no, no men's ball. No. I think I I, I probably think Steph gonna still win. She's That's tough. She's tough, and and I love Steph, and I'm going with Steph too. But Sabrina can shoot that thing, man. I, I think this is great to me. This is outside the box thinking. This is the way to garner more eyes. Yeah, you know, because unfortunately, I feel like I used to be such a huge fan. Not to change the subject of the Pro Bowl back when you guys oh, played because yeah. it was a Hawaii. real game. Eat that pineapple. It was a real game. You know, now it's so many gimmicks and different things to try to get that attention. I feel like the All Star game in the NBA has kind of lost its 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 uh too because guys aren't really playing that hard out there. You know. What I mean, so this to me, this is a different way to get more eyeballs. Everyone's going to be watching this shootout, and it's two of the best shooters, if not two, the two yeah, best shooters the in the world. Yeah, but the thing is, has she done this? See, he's done it before. She has too. Oh, she's she oh, yeah, grabbed she, the ball. She, she's, she's done. It. Yeah, she's done her thing. Yeah, oh, she set okay. the she set the record for the most made. Was it in? Was it for? It was it, in what, the three point contest. What, yeah. Was it during the? Was it during the NBA All Star Weekend though? Was it? Yeah. Oh, it was right. W All. Oh, excuse me. So WNBA All Star Weekend because I know sometimes right. they they implement the WNBA in the NBA All Star Weekend. Okay. So no, she could really shoot. No, I know she could yeah. shoot, but it, but I was just yeah. thinking, you know, you grabbing a ball. No, boom, she's done it off the rack. Ball. Oh yeah. No, she okay. set the record. I'm going with Steph though. Man. I, I'm right. definitely going I'm just with Steph. Roll with Steph. Yeah, I've got to go to Steph, but that's gonna be a good one. You think Steph might lose on purpose? Maybe just nah. to no, nah, he ain't gonna lose. Know, you know, he can't lose. You definitely not losing. How that's gonna look? Uh uh, can't do it. Make he's supposed to be the, the he's supposed to be the greatest nah. shooter to 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 ever put a, put the shoes on a court. Why yeah. would he ever do that? Nah, can't do it. I understand what you're saying. Oh, he just lose on purpose because he he wants to just give her the opportunity. No, 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 he can't mm -hmm. do that. No, nah, nope. killers don't do that. I hear you. Okay, well, moving on <laughs> to college basketball. Bronny James was recently trolled on the internet for his stat line versus Matt's UCLA Bruins. Oh God. Yeah, he went zero for three from the floor, added a pair of free throws, and a block that resulted in a technical foul. Rumors, though, have circulated that he's already on multiple teams' draft boards. But Matt, without the Ooh. James name, is Bronny an NBA talent this year? To be honest with you, I haven't seen a ton of Bronny's games. I feel like he could probably use another year or two uh, of just kind of honing his skills. And, and Key and I, you and I were talking about this, you know, off air before we started. Obviously, having that James name is going to help, but at the end of the day, it's not going to keep him there. It may help him get the opportunity to get into the league, but I feel like he possibly needs another year or two to hone his skills. Um, 
But it, it's tough. I mean, we played Bryce last night. You know, uh, Crespi knocked out Sierra Canyon last night. And it's got to be hard to be those two boys because your dad is is the greatest or arguably one of the greatest players ever to live. And we live in such a, obviously, a social media-driven era. So anything you do is going to be critiqued and criticized. And when you don't play well, it's going to be magnified. So I, yeah. I, I wish nothing but, uh, but the best for those boys. Um, I think... He is an NBA talent, but I feel like he could probably use another year or two under his belt. Um, but the clock is ticking because, you know, Bron's ultimate goal is to play with his son. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, it's interesting because I was with LeBron the end of last year after the Golden State Playoff. uh, playoffs. Mm -hmm. We were together, and I was having a conversation with him about Bronny. We were just talking or whatever because Bronny had just committed to USC mm -hmm. or whatnot, and we were just talking – and talking about Bronny a little bit. And like he said, don't nobody know what the F my son doing. Mm. Everybody keeps speculating mm -hmm. he going to the NBA, going mm -hmm. to the NBA after his first year. He's like, mm -hmm. man, people don't even know what the fuck they talking about because we ain't made that decision right. yet. We have no idea. He may need another year. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And based on what happened to him with the cardiac arrest situation, what's the rush? Right. Ain't no rush. Right. Daddy get a billionaire. <laughs> uh, you know, ain't no need to rush. No, I agree. No. And, and, and is, he a, is he a professional basketball talent? Yes, he's a professional basketball talent. Everybody thinks it's got to be the NBA all no. the time. Mm -mm. And it doesn't necessarily, obviously, that's the ultimate goal, mm -hmm. is to be able to be in the NBA, wear the socks with the logo on it. Mm -hmm. But in the end, he's a pro basketball yeah. player. Will he, will he at some point in time get a check from an NBA team? Yeah. Most likely, yes. Mm -hmm. Most likely, yes. Yeah. Man, they got dudes, they got dudes that get drafted all day long on two-way contracts in the G League that's high draft picks, all those sort of things. They waste draft picks on dudes, as you know, Matt. They mm -hmm. couldn't play dead in the Cowboy movie. Mm. I think he gets trolled on social media because he is LeBron's son. Right. And so much is made. It ain't no different than when you was in high school yeah, with I me. Relate. It ain't no different. Mm -hmm. That's the way they was hating on you. Mm -hmm. Oh, how did he get a scholarship? Dude, about my son at the time might be 5'10", 175. Nick Saban, we had the 707 tournament. Lane Kiffin called me. I'm like, what's up, Lane? Coach wants to talk to Keyshawn. Pick, get a phone to Keyshawn, Nick Saban. Hey, what's up, Nick? Okay, here, let me give it to him. Boy, here, come on. He in the middle of the game. I said, come over here, man. Nick Saban on the phone. Everybody looking. He offered him a scholarship. Mm. But it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. They gonna hate. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's just what it is. It's more what you gonna do? It's more jealousy. They gonna hate, they gonna hate on you because you on my show now. They gonna hate. Period. That's just what it is. It's jealousy, insecurity, yeah. their life sucks. So they're gonna hate. But I feel like well, uh, last thing I will say on this is a lot of this is based off potential. Yes. So your last name is James, and you see what the father's been Absolutely. Do, so they're hoping at one point Bronny can be not his, not his dad. He ain't going to never but, be his father. But something, you know, in that same realm. So I feel like LeBron or uh, Bronny will be an NBA player at some point. I just don't know how fast that's going to happen. The DNA is there. Yeah, it's absolutely. Just, what is what is it, it ultimate, gonna, the goal is going to be, and where is he going to end up at? Yeah. Was a good follow up. Uh, both of you are former professional athletes whose son have followed in your career footsteps. But Matt, what is this experience like? Uh, let's start with you because you just said you had a uh, two players that are playing mm -hmm. right now, Crespi. Yeah, right. Yeah, I got twin boys, Isaiah and Carter. They're freshmen playing varsity. Uh, they knocked right. out the one, the number one team, uh, Sierra Canyon, where uh, Bryce goes last night. Uh, and it, it, it's been an amazing journey, an amazing roller coaster. And, and you know, when Key was echoing that they're going to hate on you because of who your pops is, it's been the same thing. But I've been preparing my kids for this since they were little. You know what yeah. I mean? I came fresh out of the NBA and started coaching them in AAU, and we worked our way to the number one team in the country by the time we were seventh and eighth grade. But it was always, oh, they're this or they're that or you're that. They're just because they're your sons. And to me, that made them work harder, but also be prepared for the brightest lights. Now, again, they're freshmen playing varsity at Sierra Canyon, a rough environment, and they're both doing their thing. Like, it's not... I'm their dad, but their work speaks for itself, just like I'm sure your son's work spoke for itself. So it gets frustrating at times, but at the, at, at the end of the day, I just want to make sure my boys are prepared for all the bullshit that may come and all the glory that may come. Yeah, no, it, it's the same thing, Matt, with, with <clears throat> Keyshawn. It was the same thing with my nephew, although my nephew's not my son. I helped my brother right. raise him. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? He lived in my mom's household. It, with Keyshawn, the hate is just, that's just what I used to tell him all the time. You know, because he's a social media dude. He, mm -hmm. he like all that shit, the mm -hmm. Instagram, and he like yep. dealing with all. I tell him, say, chap, uh, uh, what they say? Uh, clap back at him. Mm -hmm. 
Go on and tell them, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I got a brand new Camaro because that's my daddy. You <laughs> right. fucking right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I live in a right. nice house because it's my daddy. Right, right. He, he I has told you, paid a lot of that way. is jealousy, man. I ain't a got, lot of that. man, I have no problem yeah. telling my kids to tell a motherfucker all what day is. long, what it is. I'm on top because it's my daddy who's putting me in what a position to do it. But also, you got to think about it from a standpoint of this social media. You've never seen someone that's doing well talk down about somebody who's not, you know what I mean? So it's just, the, it's the people that are below you with all due respect, whether it be social status, cl- uh, cl- uh, classification, or or talent, who are just, you know, looking up. Like, damn, and, I, I would give anything to be there, but since I can't be there, let me talk bad about it. And you. I always tell, I always tell my kids, I tell him in general when he was playing ball, if it's not what you want to do, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, I can't if love you it want, more if than you. you. Wanna, if you don't yeah. want to do it and you want to go chase the skirts and hang out and graduate from school and get education, do you I'm think? good with you. I'm going to support you. Don't even trip. Right. You don't have to play because yeah. I play. Right. You don't have to play football because I played it. And, and my I, nephew and played it. And it's unfortunate. And you've probably seen it too. Like Sometimes I feel like kids are trying to live through their children and I feel like they make it a job too early and sometimes the parents love it more than the kids do and I feel like that's when the kids are burnt out you know what I mean I made absolutely my whole thing was I never worked the twins out at all like Cole Cole worked them out for their 10th birthday one time and it kind of turned the light on but they really didn't start working out they're they're, they just turned 15 they didn't start working out till they're like 12 or 13 because I wanted to make sure that's what they wanted to do not what I wanted to do or what I wanted them to do I was never going to push them in it because again I feel like I see it all the time where these parents are just making it a job at a young age you're working out before school, after school, with practice seven days a week. I'm like, the pros don't even work that much. Yeah. These are kids, so yeah. they're, they're, you know that light is going to burn out. So no, yeah, I didn't work. I didn't work him it. out. I paid people to work him out, or, and that was it. I never. I didn't. Even, sometimes I didn't do, even. He yeah, I wanted to do it. it. Sometimes foremost, I didn't even yeah. go to the workout. Right. He would waste my money. I didn't pay for it. <laughs> Where you at? Oh, I'm working out. I get another call. I thought you said you was working out. Oh, because he didn't want to do it. <laughs> What you laughing at? It's the truth. <laughs> you, you, moving on, moving on. Um, I, I want to play this Nick uh, Nick Wright. Uh, hold on. <laughs> hey, you brought, you at, man? Hey, you brought back too many memories yeah, right there, right? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm at the field. Right. No, you're not. He's telling right. me right now you ain't at the field. <laughs> we on our way. No, yeah. you're not. Right. All right, it. moving on, though. <laughs> I want to play this uh, take by Nick Wright. He had regarding the Mahomes-Brady and LeBron-Jordan debate. Take a look. Tom did something interesting because Tom was on with you. He, you know, he did a couple of interviews today. In one of them, he was asked about Mahomes. And Tom said, you know, was talking about how great he is and all these things. And then he was like, listen, man, because he was asked about someone else being the GOAT. He was like, listen, if anyone can get to seven Super Bowls, like I want to shake their hand because I know, like, <laughs> like he's he made it very clear. Oh yeah, someone else can be the goat. They better get seven fucking rings though, because I don't want to hear nothing about someone. Because he knows seven's gonna be hard. But and so he's like, that's the standard. And just to be clear, get to seven and we can talk. But I don't think you have to get to seven. Like the point I always make: Michael Jordan retired the first time, had three rings, Magic was still playing at that time, had five. Corinne had just retired, had six. You know what they put on Michael's statue? The greatest there ever was, the greatest there ever will be. They weren't counting rings then. But they were like, no, we saw him. He's better than everybody. He's yeah. the best. Good Nobody point. ever started, by the way, counting rings until Michael got the most. And then people were like, oh, we got to count the rings. So, Matt, do you agree with Nick that Mahomes doesn't need to stack rings to surpass Brady in the same way LeBron doesn't need six rings to pass Jordan? This is a tough question, and I think we're always trying to figure out who is what. Uh, First of all, everyone we've mentioned are great in their own right. I just know Mahomes is on a hell of a pace, but four Super Bowls in his first six years? Yeah. I mean, hell of a pace. I feel like overall, as a talent, Mahomes is a better talent, more talented quarterback than Tom Brady. Tom Brady played a lot of years and got seven rings. So to me, it's some people hold talent as the ultimate, you know, decider. Some people hold merchandise, you know, I mean, what you've done, especially in the NBA with, you know, uh, what's his name from the... uh, from the Celtics that won seven rings. Bill Russell. Yeah, yeah Bill Russell runs, you know, 11 rings. 11. You know I mean, so it just kind of depends on, you know. It, it, this and is a couple all of them was as a coach, too. Yeah, this is all opinion-based, you know, at the end of the day. I think just to even be in this conversation, you know you're great. Uh, Tom Brady, as we stand right now, is the GOAT in the NFL. But I feel like Mahomes has more talent than Tom Brady. But it's going to, you know, how many rings can you win? And then when he's done, you're going to have to chop that up and You know what's out. so crazy? Like you said, these conversations so clearly, everybody except Bill Russell— <laughs> Right. I got an opportunity to see play. Uh-huh. 
whether it was me hanging out with Michael Jordan early in my career, going to Chicago, sitting courtside or New York or whatever the case is. When I was a young kid, uh, wearing a knee sleeve, even though know, nothing was wrong with my damn and knee, rolling it down. Over for the red, yeah, so I had to have a red, Come you know on, what I'm saying? Know. And so, LeBron, you look at his situation, he's been to 10 finals, I think, 11 finals or whatever the number is, and how many championships. When I look at that, I say to myself, I just enjoy watching the greatness mm -hmm. because everybody's standards of a GOAT is a little bit different, yep. right? Tom Brady say seven rings. Well, I don't say seven rings because I look at Joe Montana, he was 4-0. Just like Jordan was 6-0. He has zero interceptions in the Super Bowl. So some people, even Joe, is like, come on, man. Right. I don't care how you got right. seven and you've right. been not 10. Mm -hmm. I've been to four and we dominated Flawless. every single time. Flawless. So now when you talk about Brady's career at the beginning, Tom Brady's career at the beginning, he didn't win no MVPs, none, zero. Patrick Mahomes got two MVPs already. Okay, plus two Super Bowl MVPs. Plus, he's been to the Super Bowl four oh, times, times in six. Mm -hmm. He's been in the AFC Championship game six straight times. So when you point to Brady's success early in his career, the first thing we could talk about is, well, he dinked and dunked along the way. He got some help. He had one of the all-time great coaching staffs. One of the, or not considered, I'm not even talking about with Bill Belichick. I'm just talking about the assistants with Romeo Crennel's oh, yeah. and, and Charlie Weiss's. Just the tutelage underneath. I mean, it just, yeah. that, that's Everybody. something totally yeah. different, Hell yeah. right? And in, in terms of Brady, then there was a 10 year stretch there where they didn't win anything. And then he went on a nice little magical carpet ride again. Mm -hmm. So I look at it and I say, no, it's not going to take seven. Patrick Mahomes, for people to really start to say goat to him. Three or four. I think he's going to take at least four, four. and then people are going to be like, okay, because if you discount the early success of Brady, who hadn't, didn't win any, any MVPs at all, Patrick Mahomes has two of those and more to come. And his cast, okay, yeah, he had Tyreek Hill and he had Kelsey, but Brady quietly had some Hall of Famers on the defensive side of the ball Absolutely. and had a tight end in Gronkowski, nice little system players in Wes Welker, along with Julian Edelman, a beast with Corey Dillon in the backfield. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and third down specialist in Kevin Falk. I mean, I could go through the mm -hmm. whole gauntlet of reasons why early Brady won championships. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking nothing away from right. him, but I also could balance that off with looking at Patrick Mahomes. First thing everybody said last year, they're done. There's no Tyreek Hill. Man, what this motherfucker go out there and do? He went out there and won a damn Super Bowl. Right. Oh, they're, 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 they're right. bad. They're going to lose to the Ravens. They're on the road. There's, there's, there's no way they'll beat Miami. They'll go to Buffalo and lose. This dude went to Buffalo and beat Josh Allen, then went on the road and beat Baltimore, who had the number one seed, beat them, and now he's getting ready to go to Vegas and play a team that he throttled a year ago in San Francisco. Hey, take it easy now. I mean, I'm just, I'm just yeah, saying. No. I know you're a Bay Area guy and everything, but no, I feel you. It's, it's just when you, you look at it. Yeah. You know, when you look at it and you say these things, but it's a good conversation yeah, to have. Yeah, absolutely. Again, all of this is. And nobody based. will ever be Jordan. No. And the reason nobody will ever be Jordan, because he created the shoe game. Man, his off the court stuff is ridiculous. I mean, it's I ridiculous. think it, I think it's safe to say that LeBron will have an all time career. Yes. Better than yeah, Jordan, but absolutely. we're talking about player. To me, it's hard to crack that. You know, it's hard to crack what MJ accomplished. And, and to me, when they ask me, you know, who's 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 the goat or who is, I feel like you know, MJ, Kobe, and Braun are all in that, yeah, in that upper same. echelon. Yeah. I mean, it, it's opinion based. You may have one, eh, and that's just me, like you say, opinion great. based. I never start NBA all time great conversations without mentioning Kareem because I too saw him play at the, toward the end of his career. But I also know the history of basketball. Yeah, right. He wanted every single level. That he's ever played on. You're right. I mean, they 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 put rules in for Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Are you taking a prime Kareem or a prime Shaq? <laughs> a prime Kareem or a prime Shaq? Man, they couldn't do nothing. They could they couldn't do nothing with the cap, though, man. From what I understand, see, I didn't see him play in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. I was a kid. Yeah, I was. But I from everything that I heard, they couldn't do nothing with him. Mm -hmm. They just couldn't do nothing with him. Mm -hmm. Now I saw Shaq play, obviously, LSU all the way through the end mm -hmm. of his career. It, it, it feels like, okay, so what era are we talking? 
just w- w- when when Shaq is with Shaq with Shaq skinny tw- Shaq in yeah, Orlando twenty five to and I don't know you know to thirty because, like because your prime. the dream gave him work when he was in Orlando dream was crazy he gave dream him work crazy. in Orlando that was a baby Shaq yeah so you're right. no you're absolutely right but I feel like Shaq played in an era where there was more re- big time centers and this is no knock to before us we, when people talk about Wilt and these guys, like, I, I don't feel like they played against the level of competition, obviously, that Shaq, night in, night out. You got to think in the late, the mid-90s to the early 2000s, you had to have a big man to win a championship. You know, the, the, the shooting came later. But how many, how many, okay, so you had Patrick Ewing, you had Lonzo, you had Dream, you had Shaq. Who else am I missing? That was a big Rick Schmidt. I mean, there's like a bunch of big guys that may not have been like all star Hall of Fame level, but there was just big guys that could really play. You think Schmitz in in, in Rick Indiana? Rick Schmitz, or whatever his name is. Um, who else? We got to remember that. I mean, there was just a lot of there was a lot. No, there was of some bigs. bigs. I'm just I'm just throwing a blank right mm-hmm, now. Me too, for some reason. I'm trying to think who, but no, there were bigs. Yeah. But Shaq, yeah. I, no, Chamberlain wasn't. Chamberlain was way before. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a shot. That nobody could defend. No, you have the sky. He created a shot. Yeah, and they, dude they would shoot sky hooks from the three. And man, they changed the rules in college because they of changed all the, the rules. Kareem was doing. So. It's, it's a book. Tough I don't know. That's a yeah. It's that's an interesting conversation. Yeah. Well, Matt, we know you're from Santa Clara. You know, yay area. <laughs> Are you giving Purdy a chance to Ooh. take down Mahomes in the Super Bowl? Uh, I was really impressed with what Purdy did uh, last game. Obviously, rough first half, but his ability to hit his targets, but then also get out of the pocket keep plays alive and then get downfield for them 10, 12 yard gains that kept drives alive. So I say all that to say, man, I'm bang, bang, Niner gang. I I feel like we have an amazing arsenal around him. Our defense is very solid, but again, Pat Mahomes is a problem, man. And he he makes things happen. So, you know, I'm definitely cheering for the Niners, uh, but I'm cheering more for, or for just a, a memorable game. Yeah. I, I can't bet against Patrick Mahomes. No, you can't. I just can't, I can't, you know, it's like betting, Against Brady, it's just hard, it's to, hard do. to do. Hard to do. You know, it's a hard. It's, it's mm-hmm. hard to do to bet against a dude that you've seen. Yeah. When they said he couldn't, he did. That's just. Yeah. It's just a hard one to to bet against. I so, agree. you know, do I think Brock Purdy is here to stay as a quarterback in the NFL? Yeah, he ain't going nowhere. He's a good quarterback. He's everybody want to say he's a game manager. All quarterbacks are game managers when they need to be, and and he's shown the ability when he needed to. To push the ball down the field and make the plays, Mm -hmm. you can't argue with that. Every single game, it gets brighter and brighter. And he continues to keep showing that he belongs. But I'm going with Mahomes in the game. I don't even, I'm sorry. I just. I'm not mad. Don't be sorry. I'm still be wearing my Niner jacket, talking shit and and being loud. But again, I know who they're going up against and and, and what his pedigree is about and and the connection with him and Kelsey and and the way they've been playing. But yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a good one for sure. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely going for the Niners. Uh, Matt, I wanted to play back what KG had to say when we went on your podcast, All the Smoke. Let's take a listen. Hey, I remember me, you, Matt, man. You was nice as, man, your rookie year, you was nice as hell. I'm talking about nice, like, hey, what's up, big fella? Hey, I think the next year I saw you, boy, you had tats on you. You was, about to <laughs> you was, you was in my grill, and you picked me one more time, like, yo, it's... This, this Barnes right, Joe. I don't know what the hell happened. Oh, so, Matt Barnes, like, yeah, yeah. niggas think it's sweet out here. I had to survive it in the finish. Yeah. yeah. Hey, P used to try to fuck with me, too. Straight it's just, up. It just that's like, like you said, that's how it was. It was bullies. It's that hair. Don't it's get that it. hair. That's what it is. Act like my nigga didn't grow up in the crack hair, yo. Cut it out. Matt speaks from that. Okay. And he's like, hey, look at nigga. Don't ever get this. Oh, my dog from that. Don't get it twisted. Don't let the hair fool you. I used to get bullied. No bull. Like, people try to bully light skin, hair, couple tattoos. They would try to bully me. So just early. Early on, I knew like the cool. I'd be cool with you, smoke weed with you all day after. But during, during you know, between them lines, it right. it, it def- It's funny you said because the mentality had to change. Yeah. <laughs> so can you speak on this further a little? What precipitated your bad boy image in the league? Uh, I mean, it was kind of the same slander I got when I came to this show from your dad. <laughs> <laughs> that light skin, curly hair, kind of mantra, reputation. Um, but I came. You know, I, I just had a different background. My pops was in the streets. You know, he he was a butcher by day, drug dealer by night. So I just seen a lot of different stuff. So although I'm half Italian, half black, so I turned out with decent hair and a lighter complexion. But like my dad is like 2:15 in the a.m. dark, and I, I feel like I have his mentality. Although you know I'm light skinned so I was always respectful to everybody. You know what I mean? Because I'm that's the type of person I am. But I knew I had to scratch and uh, scratch, uh, scratch and claw 
to make the league and stay in the league. You know, I was a football player first. I chose basketball and, and, and it was a tougher journey for me, but it's what I wanted to do. So, I mean, it was going to be either be me or them. You know what I mean? And in and, and the beginning of my career, I bounced around and tried to try to find a home. But I realized that, you know, you can't always there's a time and place to be cool. And, and between the lines wasn't one of them. No, so crazy, though, man, the, the whole light skin, fair skin thing in professional <laughs> sports is some of the some of the craziest <laughs> conversations that you can have. Oh, you know, we did it in football. Yeah. The same thing. Like, man, tell me one dude light skin that's good. They be like, Tony Gonzalez. She's like, man, that's not the same, man. That, ain't, that, that, that doesn't work. Give me one that's real right. good. No. But it's, I don't know, man. It's just one. That, it and, you, and you went to UCLA. Yeah. No, I, so every, you know how that is, the powder blues, people yeah. just feel like soft. soft. Yeah, they just soft feel soft. The, yeah, and it just, I didn't come from that. You know what I mean? So I could have fit the, the stereotypical look of being there, but... My pops was different, and 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 that's what I kind of stood on. So when people would see the curly hair or the tattoos, they're like, "Oh, this dude is huh? This uh, this." Nah. And then they would get into it. And I'm just like, I'm never claimed to be the toughest guy ever, but I learned. You know, I was always fighting. So if it came down to it, you know, it, I, I was okay with that. So again, the one that, that made me laugh when I seen him because again, I remember meeting KG the first time because I'm fans of all these guys, yeah. very respectful. But when we get through the lines, man, it's I got to try to make a living off this light skinned dude. I'm gonna take advantage of him. Yeah, I wish they yeah. would line. A light skinned dude up on me. <laughs> I'm getting ready to do him something dirty. He got nice hair. He, mom and dad probably got jobs. That's uh, the way they think. Right? <laughs> right? right. They both got jobs. Right. They got nah. 401ks. Nah, Here nah. we are starving to death. See, my parents were functioning <laughs> drug addicts. Like, I didn't come from that prototypical light skinned background. Like, yeah. I came, you know, food stamps, so staring crazy. Rules, moving out the mud. So, my, you know, my, my complexion can can deceive people at times. Yeah. <laughs> well, give us your top five NBA bad boys of all time. Ooh, bad boys, bad boys. Dennis Rodman, Ron Artest, um, Ben Wallace, uh, Charles Oakley, Draymond Green. See, you missing. I, I wouldn't even have Ben Wallace on there. Who would you put? I'm gonna put uh, Rashid on there. Oh, good call. Rashid going on there. Yeah. I, I and then you Anthony said Mason. you said Dre. No, I'm putting I'm putting Oak on there. I put Oak on there. Did you say Oak? Mm -hmm. I put Oak. He was he was the second my second to last. Yeah. Let me say. So you said who? So I said Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Ron Artest. For sure. I put uh, Draymond. Draymond. Let me hold up on that Bill, one. Draymond. Uh, I put uh, Oak. Oak. And then who was my last one? You I said put, ben, Wallace. ben Wallace. I'm going to say Rasheed. <clears throat> I'm going to say Rasheed because Rasheed didn't. Anthony Mason. He didn't give a fuck. Anthony Mason, Anthony didn't, Mason give fuck. didn't give a fuck. Uh, Xavier McDaniels didn't give a fuck. X didn't give a fuck. Uh, who else? Bernie Maxwell didn't give a fuck. Yeah, but see. He was little though. He was a little <clears throat> cat. But he was still burnt. They said he put <laughs> hands on GP. Stevie Jack? Yeah, Jack. Yeah, that's my guy. Jack was a bad boy. I like Pat Bev. I like what he does. He's a little guy, though. But see, Pat, Pat is more scrappy yeah. on your nerves. Right. Even and though, actually, you know what I'm saying? Huh. He just, yeah. he, like, Pat is cool, but it, like, I hate Pat. Like, I don't even <laughs> like, as a fan, man, I hate watching him, man. He, but when he with the Lakers, I'm you cool. with it, right. I'm good, but right. when he just, because he like a little gnat, man, antics, get out of here. The antics. You know, the antics yeah. is a lot, yeah. but he, you, yeah. You talking about, like, enforcer bad boy types. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about enforcer bad like boy. Like, they would slap the shit out of you. Yeah, like, yeah. like Oak did. I put uh, Oak number one. I put Oak number one. <laughs> Oak. They said Oak slapped what was that? Uh, Charles Barkley. No, I went Barkley. No, no. He hit. Uh, oh, Jeff McGinnis. Jeff McGinnis. Over, yeah, over some, over some shit. Yeah. Yeah, he hit Jeff McGinnis. <laughs> I remember that. Like, it was yesterday. Them coming off the uh, the, the shoot around court, yeah, and, and smack them coming on, bam. Oof. And the thing is, is see, I remember all that because in my New York days, that was all part of my little crew. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, you know, ready? I was a young uh, puppy uh, running around, messing around with him and MJ and all yeah, them dudes when they come yeah, to town. You right. know, it was just one of mm -hmm. those hangout type situations. Yeah. So I remember when he slapped Jeff McGinnis. What was Lord that like? Mercy. What, was, what was that? I mean, obviously we just had you on the pod and I can't wait for everyone to see you on all the smoke. But what was the, what were those early days in New York like? Because I mean, obviously we West Coast dudes for life and you go to New York is, is, is the media mecca and, and you're running with the big dogs. What was that like in your early days? Man, it, well, number one, I had just came from USC. Number one pick in the draft. We went one in 15, but that really didn't, that it wasn't about the one in 15. It was just, understanding like how to move around in New York. So this was at the height 
of the Biggies and the Tupacs, yeah, the West Coast West versus Coast the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. I was in the middle of all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because I was friends with both of them on both sides. You know, more friends with with Pac than I was with Big Nim, but I was still, it was all that, you know? Everybody think the clubs was popping now. Like back oh. then, the clubs was crazy. And then everybody talk about, like when you start, I had I wasn't married yet to his mom. I eventually got married, then I eventually got divorced. Mm -hmm. And all that was a, a, a New York contributed to both sides of the equation. Because his mom was still in school. Keyshawn's mom was still in school at USC. Oh, so, so she I was, was out here. She was still in school at USC, and I was out there as a Lone Ranger. The so at that point, yeah, it was over. It was in the mouthpiece. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't oh. over with. It was oh, over man. with. At that point, so when you look at it, it was all just fun. And then once we started winning, oh, it was over. Because I went 1 in 15. Then eventually Two we went to the later, championship was, game. AFC, right? and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, then right. at that point, I started going to Pro Bowls and everything. So it was really me, Derek Jeter, Patrick Ewing, mm. and Michael Strahan mm. was really. And then King, I want to say, I, I feel like in hockey, it was like Mark Messier or something like that. And those were pretty much. The top and dogs. then you had Bad Boy and Puffy Nim and mm -hmm, the rappers and mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. But for the most part, that's what it was. Hey, Matt. Hell of a time. Hell of a time to be alive. <laughs> you no, I hey, missed that. I, hey, I always say I wish hey. I was 10 years older. I wish I was the, 10 the, years older. The, 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 the lifestyle, because I don't smoke weed, none of that, mm -hmm. drugs, none of that mm -hmm. sort of stuff, and I barely drank. Mm -hmm. Barely. At the end of the day, you just get... <laughs> yeah, it's different. Oh, man. It's different. I oh, really I had imagine. my first sushi out there. And the reason I did it is because it was a girl who talked me into doing it. And she looked good. Because I had to. And she looked good. I had to. Yeah, no, no. It was problem. like... What you want me to eat, baby? Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I had to. I had to. Every, is that it? You want, prior get, to that, you want me to get anything else, prior baby? Prior to that, I wouldn't touch it. Right. I ain't stopped since then. I'm like, no, oh, okay, cool. No problem. No, I can imagine. The, 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 the New York it was fun, though. Winning. In the 90s. Man, I, all I did was to help take help take the team. Many would say I took the team, but I helped take the team to the AFC Championship game. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now in New York City, it's like I, I won five Super Bowls they or something. That's how they treat That's me. That's dope. Because they cool, you know, Very it's just loyal. cool like that. Loyal, yeah. Well, Matt, we know you were an all-star athlete in basketball and football. Some would like to say you're sitting next to a real wide out. <laughs> Could you have played wide receiver in the NFL had you stuck with it? I don't like to disrespect because I know how hard it is to make any kind of professional realms, but I feel like at 6'7", 220, ran a 439, had a 40-inch vert, can really catch and really run routes. I feel like if I would have stuck with my first love, because people don't know, I didn't pick up basketball until I got a, uh, maybe, I always played it, but I didn't start taking it serious until like late middle school, early high school. But football from the crib, because my dad was a street dude, so he would play in them Sunday tackle football leagues, got a call, one time got a trial with the 49ers, so football was my life. So I feel like if I would have kept football first, that I definitely could have made the NFL. I just don't know how long it would have lasted being 6'8". You know, I look back at the Harold Carmichaels from, from uh, you six, the Eagles. Eight? Yeah. What was you in high school? 6'8". Oh. Mm -hmm. Harold, tall. Harold Carmichael from eight. the Eagles. And then you see Tony Gonzalez is maybe six years older than me, but he was only 6'4". You know, Key came, what are you, 6'3", six, 6'4"? Six, six, four. Four. So there wasn't really no one my size out there doing it, and that's what kind of deterred me. Like, hey, maybe let's just stick to this basketball thing. But if you watch my career, it makes a lot of sense because I love physicality. Like, it wasn't out there trying to be a tough guy. Like, I'm used to getting tackled or being tackled, you know, or, or tackling somebody. So no, that was you, kind of my you, mentality. You being 6'7", six, 6'8", six, you would have been an easy target for a chop down. Mm-hmm. And but you would have, but you would have, you would have still been able. You know, Randy Moss about Randy Moss about six, six five. five and a half, yeah. man. Yeah. Randy Moss tall as a yeah. motherfucker. Mm -hmm. he, every time I see him, like damn, yeah. you tall. Like I said yeah. to you at, at yeah. the uh, studio when I saw you, I hadn't seen you in a long mm -hmm. time. That's so why I looked at this motherfucker tall. Yeah. Yeah, because no. you can take advantage of certain situations. You know, where you run slants, you're mm -hmm. a big dude, your body alone mm -hmm. going to chill people. Yep. You know, going down the sideline, fade routes, mm -hmm. bombs, all that sort of stuff. Where it gets, gets dangerous for cross big dudes middle. is shallow crosses. Cross things middle. in the middle of the them field. Quick, them quick slants. Other than yeah, that, or them you, screens, yeah. No, yeah, you yeah. probably, you probably like been I okay. Made, I could have made a splash, but again, I don't know what the longevity would have been like because of my size. But you, you know, know they hit hard in the NFL. Yeah, though, yeah, and that's back when you could really hit too. Yeah, see, they hit hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to take away from anybody. But I was always with that. Like, football was really, really my first sport. You know what I mean? So I understand the physicality. I would never obviously got to the to the NFL level with it, but I, you know, I'm a huge fan of it. So I know how they – and back when you was playing, there wasn't really no 
you just take them out. Yeah, dudes, dudes, <clears throat> dudes in NFL, how I like to, to describe certain cats in NFL, they broke, they ain't got no money. They get to the league, they get a little bit of money, they get babies, then they got their wives and their girlfriends arguing with them every single day. They got them car seats in the back with them, with them, them SUVs, and they got full grown man beards, and they ain't got nothing to live for. They just mad. They got their tattoos, and you get to talk a shit to them. They want to break your face and in half. And then they didn't like basketball players, too, because <laughs> back then you could be a star and not really be known, but you'd yeah. be sitting on the bench in the league, and everybody's, ah, oh, look at them, look at them. So I always, because I was a football player first, so I was, I was someone in college that was cool with both sides. And yeah. then when I was in the Bay, there used to always be a little bit of funk between the Raiders and Niners because we were Golden State, and they would be have all, it would, I'm telling you, we walk in the club and they'd all be by the football players. We walk in and all the women would come over to the oh, basketball of course. players. You know what I mean? So it was always kind of like, man, fuck them. Do woo woo woo. So it, the football, yeah, football players. You know, they, I they ain't turn really a little experienced different. that, but I understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I really didn't experience that. I, I would walk in the club and the basketball players would be over there, and then all of a sudden. Everything. Yeah, no, nah, it, 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 it wasn't like that for us. <laughs> well, I said, thanks a lot, man. I, hey, man, you know man, I love having fun bro, with you, baby. Sure, I man. Good to see you. Appreciate you joining Good me. Good luck. That's a wrap for today. I appreciate my guy, Matt Barnes, NBA champion, for joining us on this show. Don't forget to subscribe and follow All Facts Podcast on social media. Until then, it's Keyshawn. 